So here's a single slit and here's a screen. So let's send a, uh, a wave through it. So here comes my wave. When it hits the uh, slit, it's going to begin to spread out and it's going to go off, you know, off at this direction, off in this direction, off in this direction, you know, kind of coming out like this. So I'm going to have a big spot here in the middle. I'm going to get destructive interference happening here. It's going to spread out at some angle theta. So what's happened is I've had, oh, look, it's, this is called diffraction. And this angle that I've got there is based on the sine of that angle is going to be related to the wavelength of the light that's coming in and the width of my slit here. Yay! Well, that's nothing exciting, actually. This big, that theta is going to do the principal maximum. But anyway, but let's not, that's, we're dealing with waves, but we're dealing with actually something else here. We want to send electrons through. So here are my electrons again, and now we're going to send them through. Now we know that these are little ping pong balls, kind of, except they have that wavelength. They have that de Broglie wavelength, which is h divided by their momentum. So the moment they start moving in, they're going to begin to diffract. Now we know from our last one that, now granted, they got to be moving pretty fast before you begin to see any real um, diffraction events happening. I mean, we're talking 23 picometers here. So as they come in, and they go through, right? They don't just all continue on, right? They're going to start spreading out and hitting in, in this one. So now we've got, again, you're going to see, right? Maybe those three hit here. Maybe one of them hits down here. Maybe another one hits out here. But they've all been moving in with some momentum in the x direction this way. But the moment they go in, they still have the momentum in the x direction, and they pick up some momentum in the y direction. That's kind of weird. So, what I, so I've got, they're coming in straight, and then somehow they begin to spread out. Well, maybe they bumped into each other. Well, maybe they, all right. But if I send one in, the same thing happens. Maybe this one goes up here. Whoa. Or maybe this one comes in, goes straight. Or maybe it comes in and goes down here. I don't know, 60% of the time it's going to come here. You know, like 15% of the time it's going to go here. So all of a sudden, you know, I don't quite know what's going on. I'm uncertain on what's going to happen. Here is my... Uh, bringing in the uncertainty principle from uh, Heisenberg. So the it's coming in. I've got P and the X. I've picked up some momentum in the Y direction, so I have some change in my momentum in the Y direction. I'm not quite sure how much it picks up here. Now, also, it, right, is this little wave? I need to flip this over and make it a little wave or something. Where's my little... Anyway... Uh, when it comes in, I don't really know where it is in my gap, where it is in my uh, width here. So it could come through here, or it could come through here. I'm not exactly sure, because it's a wave. It could be, oh, is it here? Is it there? Is, well, I don't know what's going on. So what I end up doing, so I can relate this change in Y to this slit width. In this case, all right, so let's get some different colors here. This slit width. So if I look at the change in momentum in the y direction, because it's picked up some somewhere, right? And then versus my P uh, momentum in the x direction, my momentum in the x direction, momentum is h over lambda. Turns out, it's going to depend. Uh, so remember that sine theta is lambda over, in this case, w, whatever my slit width is. So lambda over w. It's related pretty closely 
to that angle. So much so that I can just chop it in there. So I end up with delta PY. Oops, you can't see that. Delta PY over H lambda. I'm just going to make it an equal sign lambda over W. That's a, do some math here. Lambda over H. Lambda over H. This turns into lambda delta PY over H equals lambda over W. The lambdas cancel out. So now it doesn't matter what kind of wave I send through through there. So I end up with the change momentum in the, uh, my uncertainty in the momentum in the Y direction over H is going to equal one over the slit width. Now well, this is related. Let me just keep that related because um, this is pretty tenuous, but because I, I just kind of threw it at you. So now the change in momentum in the Y direction times the slit width is related to H. But now my slit width, I don't know where it's coming through here. So I'm going to, since I've got X and Y, my slit width is my unknown, it's my uncertainty in the Y direction. It's my uncertainty in the Y direction. So now this becomes that's the uncertainty in my momentum in the Y direction times my uncertainty in the where it's coming through the slit is related to the um, Planck's constant. In fact, uh, more really, uh, realistically, uh, if I was in college, I'd actually make you do this. It's h over 4 pi. Or in my case, I really like using tau. It's h over 2 tau where tau is 2 pi. So notice, ah, I got the 2 in there. I got tau, I got h. This looks a little bit nicer. So what does this mean? This is as, there's a minimum value for where I can find out what direction this thing is going or where it is. So I get to know, as I know more and more about most, as these numbers get smaller, there's a minimum value they can reach, and that's h over 2 pi. I'm sorry, h over 4 pi, or h over 2 tau. I got my pi's and tau's mixed up. So what does that mean? Eventually, I'll reach a point where if I know so much about where it is, I have to know less about where it's going. If I know a whole lot about where it's going, I know less about where it is. So what that means is there's a fundamental limit. There's a fundamental limit over how much I can know. Much I can know. And it doesn't matter whether my techniques get better. My, um, I will always have some sort of uncertainty about where things are or where things are going. Now, if you play with the units a little bit over here, you can end up with uh, some pretty neat things, such as um, the change in energy times the change, the uncertainty and the energy and the uncertainty of the time is also over 4 pi. So what does that mean? My, I can be uncertain about how much energy there is if I'm very, if I know exactly how much time there's going on, if I know more about the time passage, whether you know it's small or large, I can be uncertain on it, which means uncertain on the amount of energy. So I can borrow energy, I can borrow some energy for short periods of time, or little amounts of energy for large periods of time, which is kind of gets into that whole conservation of momentum, conservation of energy only really works on large scales. At the smaller scales, it kind of gets a little, uh, what would you say, elastic.